Let's pull from Paul Squeeze of Art and Beauty, Selected Readings and Aesthetics from Plato to Hacker. Let's see if we can find some words of inspiration. I turn to 22, Kent, on page 303. It is line 22 or something. Um, the necessity of the universal agreement that is thought in a judgment of taste is a subjective necessity, which is represented as objective under the preposition of a common sense. In all judgments by which we describe anything as beautiful, we allow no one to be of another opinion without, however, grounding our judgment on concepts, but only on our feeling, which we therefore place at its basis, not as a private, but as a communal fe feeling. Now this common sense cannot be grounded on experience, for it aims at justifying judgments which contain an ought, O-U-G-H-T. It does not say that everyone will agree with any, my judgment, but that they ought. And so common sense is an example of those judgments I have put forward, my judgment of taste, and on account of which I attribute to the latter an exemplary validity, validity is a near ideal norm under the, super, under the supposition of which I have a right to make into a rule for everyone a judgment that accords therewith as well as with the satisfaction in, a, in an object expressed in such judgment, for the principle which concerns the agreement of different judging person, persons, although only subjective, is yet assumed as subjectively universal, an idea necessary for everyone, and thus can claim universal assent, as if we were, ob, were objective, provided we are sure that we have correctly subsumed particulars under it. This indeterminate norm of a common sense is actually presupposed by us, as is shown by our claim to lay down judgments of taste. Whether there is in fact such a common sense as a constitution, constitu, constitutative principle of reason makes it only into a regular principle for producing in us a common sense for higher purposes. Whether therefore Taste is an original and natural faculty, or only the idea of an artificial one yet to be acquired, so that a judgment of taste with its assumption of a universal assent, in fact, is only a requirement of reason, a reductive necessity, or the confluence of feeling. If any one man with that of other, <laughs> of every other, only signifies the possibility of arriving at this accord. And then this is like the longest sentence ever. And the judgment of taste only affords one example of the application of this principle. These questions we have neither the wish nor the power to investigate as yet. We have now only to resolve the faculty of taste into its elements in order to unite them at last in the idea of a common sense. Explanation of the beautiful resulting from the fourth moment Beautiful is that which any concept is cognized as the object of a, necess of a necessary satisfaction. The beautiful is that which without any concept is cognized as the, as the object of a necessary of a necessary satisfaction. starts going into law, a general remark on the first section of the analytic. If we seek the results of the preceding anal analysis, we find that everything runs up into the concept of taste, that is, that it is a faculty for judging an object in reference to the imagination's free conformity to law. Now, if in the judgment of taste, the imagination must be considered in its freedom, is the first place not to be regarded as reproductive as it is subject to the laws of association. 
as productive and spontaneous as the author of Arbitrary Forms of Classical in Intuition. Now, though in the apprehension of a given object of sense it is tied to a definite form of this object and so far has no free play such as that as poetry, yet it may be readily it may readily be conceived that the object can furnish it with such a form containing the collection of the manifold of the imagination itself it will be left free to project in accordance with the conformity of the law of understanding in general the imaginative power should be free and yet of and yet of itself conform to the law by bringing autonomy with it it with it is a contradiction the understanding alone gives a law if however the imagination is compelled to proceed according to a definite law is pro it is its product is in respect of form is determined by concepts as to what it ought to be but then as is above shown, the satisfaction is not that in the beautiful, but in the good, in perfection, at any rate, in mere form of perfection, and the judgment is not a judgment of taste, thus only conformity to law, without law, and subject, and a subjective agreement of imagination with understanding, without an objective agreement, where the representation is referred to a definite concept of an object, would be able to subsist together with the free conformity of law to law of the understanding, which is also called the pers purpose purposiveness without purpose. Purpose pur purposiveness and without the particular character of a judgment of taste. There's a lot there, but I like the um, quotes in the fourth explanation of the beautiful resulting from the fourth moment. Beautiful is that without any concept is cognized as the object of a necessary satisfaction. Whatever brings satisfaction, aesthetic satisfaction to you, beautiful. And we have yet now only to resolve the faculty of taste into its elements in order to unite them at last, in the idea of a common sense, and that I believe, or was it a different spirit reading um, that I didn't record? That maybe it was four elements. <laughs> They're all mixing together at this point, so it's hard to keep them separate, but maybe that was interesting to you. It's kind of random. It's very uh, heady, so <laughs> anyways.